Um, I'm Khan. I, I'm the co-founder of Studio Hive, and we're at the digital art studio based in Bangkok. Yeah, so we, um, we do a lot of work for um, design-wise for entertainment industry, I would say. So video games, comics, and now our main, what our, our new focus are toys and collectibles. Um, I'm, I'm a geek. Uh, obviously so um, when I was growing up I, I would I try to do whatever I can to get into the business so so that I you know when I believe that if you if you work on something that you like you don't feel like working you feel like you know waking up and then you want to um, get toys you want to play games and things like that so it really it really drives me into um, working into into the field entertainment industry that that I enjoy yeah so if you ask me how did I get in so for video games we started we actually started in comics um, the first project we ever did was um, actually this one the first comic was with um, Stan Lee himself so this one, me and my partner founded the uh, Studio Hive, me and Scan. We had about four people working in the studio under like a basement of like a, in a barber shop or something. So that time we spent about almost uh, four or five months to cook up one whole book, which is really a, a, a big graphic novel. Yeah. So. Um, my partner Scan, he's he's like um, one of the cover artists for Marvel now. He's the only only one in Thailand, so he's getting quite popular with his covers. We got a uh, Iron Man, we got Hulk, Weapon H, which he he was he really put this character on the map. So it was like the first ever showing of the character, and now he's doing tons of Venom covers, and that's getting. Uh, good popularity as well yeah so from there we gradually shifting into video game business doing working for Blizzard Square Enix projects like um, Hearthstone and uh, Final Fantasy things like that so eventually we get into a point where we're like hey we've We've done comics, we've done games, and what's our next big thing? You know, our next big, big thing is toys. We really, really enjoy toys. I'm a collector of toys. Scan is a, a modeler. So we try our best to um, get into um, collectible industry. And then the first project, well, the first big project was with um, XM Studios. So the very first one that we worked on with them was uh, Magneto. Magneto and Throne, yeah, that's the first, the first one. It was our big break into in the industry. Um, for me, it's it's about it's about that moment in time that you feel like, hey, this this project is really cool. Um, the it still has to be the first one. The first one was uh, Magneto, and it was really really the first time. Every you know, you it's always the best, always exciting at that time so seeing seeing how he he started from concept into um, 3d and then the actual painted prototype it was it was very very um, special for us yeah 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 the first the first one definitely we were really happy with how things turned out and uh, obviously the the, the community the, the collectors they love it and it's still one of the best pieces for for us but but for me me and scan when i do a lot of research right so, so whenever we do something if you give me a character uh, or, or a project i have to see we have to think would this be better than what we what there is currently on the market if you give me one character and say hey do this and we think we cannot top off the the existing one there's, there's no no point of doing that so whatever we do which character we do we try to make them 
as uh, as the better than than the updated version of the current one. Yeah. There's there's two there's two um usually there's two when they give us the 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 task some some of them would give us the turnaround. If they if they give us the turnaround, then it's easy, you know. The, for example, the style guide. Um, we actually also work on style guide. For example, these ones. You, you see these ones? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we also do that for Marvel. So, um, they would give us turnaround of whatever it could be pictures of the actors or um, side by side comparison. Then you just make a three D based on that. But there are some some project that requires more. For example, this these ones, the the Mortal Kombat that we did for Swarm Collectibles. Back in the days, Mortal Kombat was just um, a very very flat um, characters. So we have to reimagine. We have to tweak a lot. We have to put in a lot of work. Um, King of Fighters, for example, Street Fighter 2, you know, at that time, there's, there's no 3D or there's no side-by-side -side comparison for you to work on. So it gets very, very challenging and creatively as well. So, um, so we have to put in a lot more work if they don't give us the, the four wheels, eight wheels and things like that. Yeah, so I, I, I personally like that we have more rooms of creativity to play with yeah for the older titles but the new titles now you just you just follow the 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 guide and yeah that that's it because one of the struggles with that would obviously be that you're taking a 2d image you're turning it 3d you're adding your creative uh artistic license to, you're adding your your signature to it and then you have to get past the licenses. Yeah, yeah, that's tough, man. That's that's one of the hardest job because each licenser is they're, they're very very different from each other. Sometimes within the same license, you talk to two different guy who approves it, then it, it could be a, a, a to totally different story. You know, this guy would give you this guy would would really want you to follow your creativity, and the other guy might be hey, you have to follow exactly the same scene exactly the same pose or whatever as it happens in in the movie or in the anime or whatever yeah so it's a it's a very very challenging part but it's not the fun part of of designing because you have to think of something which you have no control over yeah if you were to if someone was to like send you an email or send you a message and say I want you to make this piece and you have full freedom what is your dream piece for you to, mm. to make um our my my personal favorite line or series is metal gear solid so um but you know there's there's a bit of an issue with the license and now but eventually we get to work with with the uh, doji shinkawa himself uh, last year on the Left Alive, it's a video game from Square Enix. So that's kind of that kind of become our goal, and we 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 got into that. So I don't think we we would get that many chance to do a toy line, but in the future, who knows? So yeah, it's still if you ask me now, it still have to be Metal Gear Solid. For I uh, actually for for Scan I think it would be Gundam, yeah. But but you know he he's he's very very into mechanic mecha, mechanic design. Gundam is his like his main main goal. Yeah. And um, we spoke about this briefly earlier. So would you like to talk about a lot of collectors complain about? the prices of things rising and they see it on a very um, basic level they see it as company X has raised the price by Y for the last Z years hmm. and this company's greedy so 
would you be able to give like a breakdown of, of why you think the prices have increased? Uh, of what the factors are? And... Yeah. Um, the factors, the main major factor for me is that the in, in China, whereas the main, all the almost all the collectibles in the world are being produced right now, they the prices have increased a lot in terms of salary, in terms of um, you know fixed cost, production cost. You, you can you can see the economy of China raised a lot in the past two to five years, right? And I think that's the main main um, issue that people didn't realize. You know, they 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 thought. Hey, you just gonna get you just want to charge me more money, which is true in a sense, but it's because the raising costs of the production fee. Yeah. Obviously, over the last, especially the last six months, but I mean the the last couple of years, the um, custom market and the fan art fan art market has uh, increased significantly. Yeah. Anyone with a laptop can be. Yeah. Uh, how what's your, what's your view on the custom market? My view is, is that there's a certain limit to, to to a number of pieces you can produce. I think there's an unspoken agreement at thirty piece. Yeah, but more than that, it's kind of commercial, so. It really does impact a lot of um, perception of the collectors. Collectors somehow. They don't feel that this is, um, this is wrong. They feel like, hey, I'm paying what a thousand dollars per for a custom piece. Um, and that's a good thing. That's like supporting the artist or whatever. But, but in reality, I believe that it hurts the company as a whole. I think we talked about before, like Venom. How many Venoms are on the market right now? Um, it's true that some of them are really, really difficult to get because they have like 30 piece or 100 piece. But still, people would, people who didn't go through the approval process, the licensing process, they'd be like, hey, but that one's better. But that Venom is better. That Venom is better. It's simply because we're playing on a different playing field. They don't have any control or uh, they don't have any restriction in regarding of sizing or or um the pose you can do for example we we did one thanos he was like triumph over all the fallen avengers he didn't get approved it was a really really cool piece but didn't get approved because if you have if you do a license piece you cannot show fallen heroes or they can't even fight their own like i can't have captain america fighting um, um, Iron Man because heroes shouldn't be fighting each other something like that we, we experienced in the past so if you do if you if you're producing a custom you throw all that out of the, the window right and then you can just make 50 piece of a really really detailed stuff or really really expensive piece but then that becomes a comparison so it really really hurts um, the market as a whole People will be given a perception of, hey, I'll wait for the custom. Hey, I'll, this one I don't like. Maybe I'll wait for another custom. And and customs are popping up everywhere now, right? It's once a month you see you see a new Venom. You see oh, another Captain America, another Wolverine. Whereas the actual Wolverine license was put on hold for a long time, as as you would you guys would know. But custom you keep popping up without any restriction so that makes it difficult for doing the license piece we'd like to talk about you know what we spoke about before about how if you were to make a piece um, and then you spend however many hours like a thousand hours sculpting this 3d piece and it, it then goes away and you know that's out of your hands and no. you would feel with it if it turned out like they used a cheap factory and you know 
know, it happens. Yeah. It happens. You know, it, it happens. Um, especially in 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 in, uh, in this industry where a lot of people is involved. It's not just us, right? We're not doing just one single piece. We're not doing ten. We're doing hundreds of them. Yeah. So there's a lot of issues. There's a licensing issue. The, um, financial issue, factory issues, you know. So, I, I, for for us, we are from a, from a production point of view. We are less artistic people, to to be honest. We are a design company, but um, Scan, my partner, has worked in the in the industry for like ten plus years, and he keeps tell, telling everyone, do not think like an artist. If you think like an artist, you cannot scale up. If you think like an artist, you'll be attached to one single thing and you cannot throw that away. So instead of producing something that you think it would work, you have to think of it as a solution to other people. For example, like I said, Thanos. Disney cannot have Thanos standing on a fallen hero. So I ha we have to understand from their point of view as well. So we have to be prepared for any anything that we do. We have to be prepared to throw that away. You know, it, sometimes we like the piece. We feel, of course, attached to the piece. But you you have to be prepared in that area as well. So sometimes you make it really a really really good piece, and sometimes it doesn't even get produced. One it didn't even get shown. Sometimes, yeah. It happens. <laughs> it must be quite disheartening after all the time. Yeah, but after a while, it becomes very. Um, it's, it's a part of the of the business, so we understand that, and then we move on to the next one. You know, just keep doing other cool stuff. Yeah, for for Hive, we we not only doing um, statues. We are known for statues. We have worked with. Um, XM Studios, Real Studios, Oni Recreations, HMO, First Figures. There's a, lo a lot of um, companies that we worked with, and uh, we also do a lot of action figures now. It's I think it's really cool. It's 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 no no custom to compete with, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we 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 having a lot of fun working on these action figures, um, Street Fighters, and um, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, things like that. So we also do a lot of miniatures. These these ones are, are, are quite fun because we just make the we just make the three D and then print it right away. You know we have our own printer and it, it's it's fun that you can just complete one thing in in your own office. So yeah, we're doing we're doing a lot of miniature games now. Thanks for um, supporting us, and uh, we we have a lot of new products. We have a lot of new designs to to share with you guys, and and hope hopefully you as a collector would enjoy our our designs. And when it becomes um, when it becomes an actual product, just please support you know all these these new studios. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Happy with that? Yeah, yeah. yeah.